I am the resurrection and the life. Whosoever believeth in me shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Now, I want you to take a deep breath. And I want you to think about that statement, not literally. Not as someone other than yourself. Now think about it if you really truly say, I am the resurrection and the life. If I believeth in myself, if I believe in my sonship with the one, if I truly believe that I am God in form, I will never perish. I shall have everlasting life. That is what the Easter experience means for us when we truly own who we are. So as many of you know, I've been doing A Course of Miracles, and I post a video online, and I'm reading from the Course of Miracle book. And it's interesting because Easter falls at different times during the year, and so it was interesting that this whole week was about finding that love within yourself to know that you have always, will always be loved. That everything else is an illusion. That when you get back to that oneness, that sonship, that knowing, absolute knowing who you are and why you're here, that there is nothing to fear. That there is nothing that is against you because the universe is always for you. So we're born of love, right? So we're going to use our stones, not as a metaphor. At, well, maybe it's a metaphor. You're going to use your, your stone and you're going to hold on to it because we're going to do a ritual towards the end of the service. So every single one of us, when we were born, we were born of love. Every single one of us. That was who we were when we got here. And then either because of life circumstances or because when we were a child, um, we heard things that weren't meant to be demeaning, but we took it that way, we started to crucify ourselves. Every single one of us, we'd begin to put our heart in a tomb, to lock away those things about ourselves that we believed weren't good enough, to lock away those things within ourselves that we believed weren't um, enough. Be it a parent, a teacher, a friend, whoever it was that told you something, and now you're living your life from that place. Refusing to believe that you can sing. Refusing to believe that you could get on stage and act. Refusing to believe that one day you'd be a minister at Genesis Global Spiritual Center. Every single person here, I would bet, has locked away a part of themselves. You're too loud. You're um, too this. You're too that. It was interesting because yesterday I saw Julia Cameron um, at an event in Seattle and did an artist way workshop with her, which was pretty amazing and, and at times energetically overwhelming. But some of the things that she asked us were, when were you told that your personality was too big? For me, I think I was probably two. And so then we start to reshape how we are in the world because we don't want people not to like us do we especially not our parents we want our parents approval so if i'm too loud if i'm running too fast you know it was at a time when little girls always wore skirts oh good grief if my panties showed because i was doing a cartwheel or something don't do that so we constantly lock ourselves up right every single one of us like the Christ consciousness, we put ourselves in a tomb and we put a stone in front of it so it will never get out. Nobody will ever know. 
So what if today you absolutely decided you were going to roll away that stone? What if today you decided all of that hurt, all of that blame, all of that shame could be put in to a stone that you're holding in your hand? So we're going to take a little journey. Hold on to your stone. Close your eyes. And first of all, I want you to know through this process that you are absolutely loved and protected. There's nothing to fear from your past. It doesn't exist. It's just a journey. But we're going to do our life in five-year increments. And every five years, if there is something that you remember that somebody said to you, or something that you did that you've carried around as shame in your heart, I want you to put it in the stone. My stone, I needed a big one because there's a period in my life I don't know if the stone's even going to be big enough, but I'm sure it is. So shame, blame, guilt, judgment. Knowing that when you judge somebody, it's just a projection of something within you. People can't hurt you. They can't. They can say whatever they want to. You choose to be hurt. You choose to take on that energy. So let's let it go. So close your eyes. We're building this safe bub bubble. The practitioners in the back of the room, remember those holding vigil? They have encircled this entire sanctuary in love and in safety and in protection so everything you walk through is just a release and a letting go the fear the doubt the blame the shame so look at our life zero to five years what is it that you may have experienced that you have held on to that you're now willing to put into your stone and for me, sometimes I will say to the divine something known or unknown because sometimes a hurt is buried so deep I may not even realize what it is and yet I'm willing to let that go. So from five to ten, a friend hurt our feelings maybe some friends locked you out of the group for a period of time maybe your mother compared you to an older sister or brother whatever it is put it in the stone known and unknown 10 to 15. These are the real fun years, aren't they? This is when we start to really think that we have to behave a certain way to be loved and expected, accepted. So who was that person that you locked away? Let them out. Put that hurt in your stone. 15 to 20. That time, for me, lots of things I want to put in this stone. The shame, the blame. I'm not good enough. I have to be a certain way for people to truly see me or love me. Just let it go. 20 to 25. We're in college or we're out in the world. Now there's a certain way that we're supposed to behave at a job or, at, or in college. Things are expected, so we bury a little piece of ourselves. Put that in the stone. 
25 to 35. Now, we're looking around our life. Maybe we're getting married. Maybe we're having kids. We're starting to, to listen to our mate. We're starting to listen to what's on the TV on how we're supposed to behave, what color our hair is supposed to be, how we're supposed to dress. What does a happy family look like? And good grief, why doesn't my family look like the family on TV? What am I doing wrong? Put it in the stone. 35 to 45. Now you're supposed to be an adult. People aren't supposed to be able to hurt you. You shouldn't have anything put in this stone. Oh, much, much more. Now we get into the shame and blame that we don't tell anybody about. God forbid if we let anybody know they'd really hurt our feelings. So we lock it up. Put ourselves in a tomb. 45 to 55. that time your kids are starting to get grown you're looking at the other side of maybe retiring someday and yet still because there's a part of you that's been so locked up so shut down you wonder am I ever going to experience real joy what would that feel like to truly just be myself fully? No holes bars, no excuses, no apologies. 55 to 65. For me, that was my awakening. Actually started in my 50s. And yet, I still have things to put into this stone because we're always peeling back that onion. We're always finding other things that we thought nobody will ever know that. And yet you do. And if you do, it's blocking your good. And if it's blocking your good, it's blocking the flow of God as you. 65 to 75. that time when life should be really easy that we should honor those people who have walked this planet for ages and yet sometimes we don't especially in this culture and so whatever they have been blocking whatever they have been holding on to about age put it in the stone or if you've got judgment about someone of that age put it in the stone 75 plus God bless you first of all for being here God bless you for walking this planet through everything and still being upright and breathing and God bless you now for putting anything that keeps you from really experiencing the sageness of who you are. Put it in the stone. And so just take a breath. I want you to come back into the room. And now I'll explain to you what we're going to do with our stones. I would first ask all of the practitioners to stand up and encircle the sanctuary. And practitioner students, if they choose. These stones are not meant to go home with you. 
nor is it meant for you to know where I'm going to put them. Because when you let go of something, you should let go. You shouldn't go back and revisit it. This is an opportunity for you to experience your own resurrection. So what I want you to do is when you're ready, go up to a practitioner, hand them your stone. They're going to take your stone, they're going to put it down, and then they're going to give you a blessing of love and delight. Wait a minute, please. We're not ready yet. Just a, just a second so everybody can understand what we're doing. Sorry. That's okay. Um, and then what I'm going to do after service is gather up the stones and I am going to put them somewhere in the Green River because I know the flow of water will take and Mother Nature will take all of that stuff that we've un un hung on to and carry it down into the ocean and carry it out to the sea and we won't have to experience and we won't call it back. So this is an opportunity of your resurrection when you're ready please come down and stand with a practitioner and allow them to do a blessing. And it would be nice if the people up front, if you'd come on down, it's, it's not that long of a walk. Thank you. Set down the rock when they give it to you, yes. Come on, Java Bean. Rolling river God Little stones are smooth Practitioners, if you have a stone, I invite Only you to see one, to one. one of the other practitioners. Yeah, you can leave the stones on the floor and when you're complete, um, be seated. If for whatever reason you didn't participate and that's okay, I invite you to bring your stone and put it in one of the piles because I really don't want you to hang on to that energy. 
whether you decided to get a blessing or not. So we're gonna end um, this part of the service a little bit differently. It, it's, uh, it's participatory and it's, a lot, and it's movement. So everybody stand up. Uh, the people up front, sorry, I need you to come back down. We're gonna make a circle around the sanctuary. You don't have to hold hands. However, I want everyone to make a circle. Bernie, please come up and stand by me. Excuse me? Sure. Okay, how many of you know what a cha how many of you don't know what a chamber prayer is? Raise your hand. There's no shame in that. Just means I need to explain. Okay. Bernie, as you all know, has completed ministerial school. Yes? <laughs> now comes the fun part. Fun part. He's gonna be tested. And having and having done that, what I know happens in testing is you start to go to all of those little things you've been told all your life and you get fear and you get kind of caught up. So what a chamber prayer is, you hold up your hands. You can say a prayer any way you choose. You do not have to use the five steps if you're not comfortable with that. If you just wanna throw words at him about how brilliant he is, how magnificent, how he's gonna ace this test without even thinking about it, do that. And so give me a second, cause it's about Bernie. <laughs> So, everybody, okay, Bernie, we love you, and right here and right, speak with me, it's a chamber prayer, okay. everybody prays at okay. the same okay. time. Okay. Bernie, you are the man, no, I know you got this, Bernie, you are a shining example of God's true love, as you emulate oneness, abundance, and being a perfect, whole, and precious expression of God right here and right now. I see you passing this test with flying colors. I know that you know all that is needed to be known. The perfect answers are downloaded from the universe. And you are going to conquer these exams. And what do we say together? And, and so, so it is! Yay, Marie! Please be seated. <laughs> it has offended me, I forgive. Within and without, I forgive. Things past, things present, things future, I forgive. I forgive absolutely everybody and everything who could possibly need forgiveness of the past or the present. I positively forgive everyone. They are free now and I am free now. And that is from Catherine Ponder's Millionaires of Genesis. <laughs>